what's happening, man? Oh, not too much. How about yourself? Everything's well, actually good. a lot, but, but, but all good stuff, man. I hear you. I hear you. Where are you located? Uh, I am in Nashville, Tennessee. All right. Nashville's a great place, man. Great music town. Yeah, we love it. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife... You're we're, in Kansas, right? Kansas City, Missouri. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's the fun. That's the fun one, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> they always they, there's a big confusion. It's like when you say Kansas, it's like people get locked on that. But yeah, there's the Missouri, and it's confusing. We got a lot of mass here, but yeah, Kansas City's really come a long way. We got we got the World Cup. I went down to the NFL draft this year. Man, I couldn't believe how much the city has grown. It's crazy, you know. So. Um, but yeah, my wife was down there in Nashville over uh, uh, New Year's, Christmas, New Year's, and she loved it. Oh yeah, we do we, we do a big deal for uh, for New Year's down here. It's uh-huh. uh, it's wild. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Well, man, it's great to meet you. Thanks for taking a minute out today. I appreciate it. And what I would like to do before we get into your life and 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 your helping people with their finances and logic models. How did you survive COVID? The last three years has been quite a thing. How did you get through it? And how has it changed the way that you do things now? Oh, that's a good question for one, uh, one for which I've thought a lot about. Um, so I got through uh, uh, a few things were really helpful. Um, I think being able to be able to go to work every day was really helpful. That kind of gave me something to, to really focus my energies on. Um, it brought it brought a level of like presence, I think, to to work that I'd never really experienced before. In the sense, there was kind of, you know, like there was there was basically two things. You know, there was work and there was my family. There was really nothing else. And uh, you know, it's an interesting dynamic to kind of see how that shifted out. And then you know, you started to see. So so with work, that was a really nice distraction. It was something to really focus and throw yourself into. Um, we did a lot of things that maybe we normally wouldn't have done that wouldn't have scaled as much. We spoke to a lot of our customers, mostly because I was in the office and lonely. So (laughs) Uh, so it was a great way to really get to know our customer. And, you know, I'm thankful for that. Um, but, uh, yes, I I think for, for work in a lot of ways, it was a really, a really positive thing for me. It kind of helped me really focus and helped me look at things maybe in a more destabilized way where you're, you're looking for alternate ways to do things. You have more of a, it's a more creative space. You're looking for solutions, you know, in face of problems. <clears throat> and I think that was kind of a, a, a neat exercise. Um, I also was able to get through uh, with the help of my friends and family, you know, I, I have a, a wife and two kids. Uh, so there was nonstop entertainment at home with, with the kids and, and, you know, keeping them active and entertained. Um, you know, it just it was uh, it had a lot of really positive things about it, and then obviously a, a whole bunch of, of you know really negative things. But it was uh, yeah, I think uh, my COVID experience was probably about as good as they could be. You know, it really was uh, <clears throat> a nice grounding thing, and I think it, it helped me grow in ways that I don't really know how I would have made those strides had it not been for something like that. Yeah, for sure. Let's get to the essence of what you do for a living. You know, it's one thing to see it on paper, but let's get to a better place. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day. One of the kids looks up at you and says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that kid? Yeah. Uh, So, I mean, I I guess in basic principles, you know, one of our main goals and jobs in life is to provide economic security for ourselves and then our families, right? Uh, so what we do is we look at all of the obstacles that are in place today for today's young investor, um, which is increasingly more and more uh, of, of the American audience. We look at the, the unique challenges they're facing, think student loans, lack of home ownership, stagnant wages, the raising rate of inflation. We look at all these problems and we build tools specifically made for them to counteract those headwinds so that they can provide economic security for themselves and then eventually their families. So when you were in the third grade, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be an astronaut. Uh, and I think, I think from the moment that I knew that you had to grow up to be something, uh, I wanted to be an astronaut. I think before you even knew that you got to grow up to do something, I wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> I, I don't know. It was just, there was, I think the first time I was ever exposed to that idea, um, I don't know. There was always just this really strong drive in me to kind of explore and see what's, you know, what, what's next. And I think that's kind of ingrained in us as human beings. I think it's kind of what, what helped our, our species kind of po- populate the entire planet was 
hey, what's on the other side of that horizon? You know, what's over there? Let's check that out. That's what put us in boats where we, you know, cross the Pacific Ocean with no destination in mind, just wanted to see what's out there. You know, it, it's just one of these things that's always propelled, you know, humanity forward. And I think that's kind of inside of all of us. I, I was in touch with that in, in a pretty, pretty strong, visceral way when I was young. And I think that's kind of what I was attracted to me to that it was it was this thing the same idea of, of how i would explore the woods you know around you know my house or i would you know always try to find something new but then take into to the nth power i mean it, it's off of this planet and everything we know everything we see everything we've ever heard of here and then there's that yeah and yeah for sure kind of well let's dig a little bit more into your childhood where were you born and raised and what were these seeds that were put into you that not only have this thirst thirst for exploration but to provide people financial independence and sound advice. Yeah, uh, so I think that's probably two very different points in life. Uh, I'm, I'm from New York originally, uh, but I've lived in 18 cities and 10 states. So I've moved around a lot, um, which I think gives you a, a, it gives you a skill of kind of being resilient and adaptable and kind of, you know, flexible in a lot of ways. Um, but I'm from New York. Uh, I think when I was very young, uh, there was, I, my parents kind of had a very laissez-faire approach to, to parenting. So there was kind of a lot of opportunities to go do your own thing uh, and explore probably too much of an opportunity to do that too early in life. <laughs> but for me, it was, uh, uh, it was a pretty amazing thing to have that autonomy and then to be able to, to go out there and explore and see things and try and find Try to learn things, try to find things, try to entertain yourself. Um, that was kind of what my childhood was. Um, yeah. And then, you know, I was very young. I started going to work with my dad. My dad is a veterinarian. Um, and so I'd go to work with him. So he, he would, you know, I'd ever wanting to make people be useful around him, he would give me jobs that I was probably too young for. But, you know, you learn how to do them and you figure it out. And it kind of gives you this idea of, of you want to you do something, you, you can learn it. You can figure it out. You can... You know, you can tackle it, right? There's, you know, and, and you know, there's just this idea that if you want something, go do it. If you want to learn how to do something, go figure it out. Yeah. You know, it was really just kind of that idea or that autonomy that really kind of put me through that that trajectory. That that's huge. That, that yeah, that's huge. That's a big thing for a young brain to grab onto to be self sufficient and figure it out. Definitely. And there really was always that like uh, that self sufficiency thing. It was that kind of drive for it. I remember, uh, I, can't, I don't recall how old I was, but I remember like learning how to how to hard boil eggs. And like when I was able to do this, I was like, okay, this is cool. I can hard boil my own eggs, and now I don't have to come back for lunch. Like I can just be gone all day. <laughs> I, remember, I remember that unlock. I, I I must have been a, a an interesting kid to spend time with. Um, yeah, uh, so that was kind of my childhood. Um, there was kind of a, a lot of rough and tumble things in between that and adulthood. Um, honestly, I, I, I think as I moved towards adulthood, really, I just kind of had a, a lot of incredibly fortuitous, uh, you know, shakes in my life. A lot of things that, you know, I, it's not because I was excellent or talented or smart or particularly hardworking, although I like to think I was all those things. Uh, but really, it was just kind of the idea that like a lot of things, you know, not by planning or understanding, I, I kind of just became lucky, right? Like, uh, when I went to college, I was able to get in-state tuition at University of Florida. I think my most expensive semester was like 1800 bucks. Uh, so I was able to work my way through school because, you know, there was such a great deal, like having in-state tuition at University of Florida, great school, fantastic deal. Uh, so I was able to graduate college debt free. And that was kind of, you know, not something that I set out to do. It was just a, a happy accident, call it. But that allowed me to kind of be less tied to, you know, being forced to do these things in order to survive. I had a little bit more autonomy, a little bit more freedom. Um, and, and that's kind of what I made a huge shift. Actually, my, my school had been my, my focus at school had been you know, more on the sciences, uh, both hard and, and soft sciences. I was a sociology chemistry double major with a minor in anthropology. And I decided that I wanted to go into finance. And so I tapped into my network. I asked and asked and asked and asked and finally found somebody willing to take a risk on, 
of a kid who was pursuing a degree in sociology and chemistry. And, and you know, I got an internship uh, in finance and, and this was just lucky. Like somebody was willing to take a chance on me. Um, I got that internship my last summer in school, about six months before I was set to graduate. Uh, and I just loved it. I fell in love with kind of how, how finance works. I really got a chance to understand how all of these things fit. And, you know, it was, it was high finance. We were an investment firm owned by an insurance companies. So we got to really see how all these things fit in the marketplace, both from a macro investing scale, all the way down to securing the liabilities for everyday people. And seeing this, it became abundantly clear that this is the language that our world is written in. You know, if you can understand how these systems work, how our economies fit with each other, how our, our you know, money is made, spent, earned, stored, all of these things, they, they give you the incentives, they give you the insights, they give you the, the focus of energies and efforts. And this is what our world is written in. And that became very clear to me. This is something that I want to be involved in. You know, because it is a place in which you can use this knowledge, I think, to make change. Um, so uh, I got offered a full-time position, but being a sociology chemistry double major, like, hey man, you gotta, you gotta get your MBA <laughs> because it looks weird. <laughs> and so yeah. they, paid for me to, they paid for me to get my, uh, my MBA in the evenings. Uh, so again, another, you know, another, fortuitous shake, right? Like it wasn't something that I set out to do, but it was something that was offered to me and I took advantage of it. And I went to school in the evenings. I got my MBA, they paid for it. Um, you know, I left school again, debt free, you know, with skills, with knowledge, with confidence to kind of go out there and, and make my way in the world. And, you know, I went through a, a series of things. I was in investments for a little bit, then I went into consulting because investments, you get a chance to like, look at these companies, understand how they make their money, the cool things that they're doing, but you don't really get an opportunity to say, Hey, I think there's a good opportunity here, or maybe there's a risk here. You basically say, should we invest or should we not? So that was really helpful to understand how these companies work, how these systems and, and, you know, markets all work, but I wanted to be able to affect more of a change. So I got into consulting and I was working with a lot of small, medium sized companies, kind of providing them with directions and, and things like that. Sometimes they would listen, sometimes they wouldn't, but it was a, a lot cooler. You were able to really kind of affect change and, and workshop problems and solve problems and see if you fixed them or if you didn't. And I really started to like that. Uh, and that's kind of when I got the idea that, you know, why don't I start my own firm? Uh, and so I went from that. Uh, I started a company. Uh, we were a, a social media content marketing tool. Basically, I mean, this seems so, so basic now, but at the time it was kind of revolutionary. Like we would find all the content that surrounded a brand, uh, display it in a page. And from that page, their brand manager could pick and choose content, but they wanted to live on their website. They wanted to live on their social. They wanted to live on their emails, things like that. So like, let's say you're a restaurant, um, Valentine's day is coming up and you want to post something about it. You can go back to this content hub, find content that people posted about you on Valentine's day last year, the year before, so on and so forth, and then repurpose that content for your materials. Um, so we did that for a while. I uh, really enjoyed growing that. I loved working with the team that we had built. And after a few years, I realized that uh, I really hate social media and I don't like consumerism. So, <laughs> so I was like, wow, I'm directly at the, the, the epicenter of these things that are kind of upsetting me. Um, so I yeah. decided to make a shift. And that's when I went into consumer finance to kind of build tools to really help today's young investor, you know, circumnavigate these problems and headwinds that they're focusing now, uh, more so than anyone else, um, to give them the tools they need to do for themselves. That's great, man. So what is like a daily motivator for you? You get up, you have these, these things that you want to accomplish. What fuels you through a day? Yeah. Uh, I mean, first and foremost, it's definitely our customers. It's the people that we work with. Um, that's kind of always been a big driver. Uh, not, not to you know get cheesy about it or back towards it, but like since having children, that kind of gives you this, this scope this idea of long-term thinking i'm not thinking about my lifespan anymore i'm thinking about their lifespan the lifespan of their children and that kind of looks at, at it makes you think about what sort of society you want to help build what sort of things you want to start working or putting your efforts toward what do you want this place to look like um and that's always been that's kind of been something that's that's kicked this motivation into high gear by thinking about this i'm thinking about what kind of world i want to leave my kids what kind of world i want to have them leave for their grand for my grandkids 
And looking at this, like, I think this is an opportunity for us to help more Americans provide for themselves and their families so that they can be in a better position, which makes our, our, our country in a better position, our society in a better position. It makes more people happy and fulfilled and with options to pursue what it is that they want to do with their lives. And that's really what all of this is about. It's about providing people with options to make choices uh, about how they want to spend their lives, how they want to, to, to deploy their efforts. And that's really what all this is about. So in, in a sense, it's definitely our customers getting to interact with them. It's also helping to do what we hope will build a, a more resilient and a stronger society. So what has been the best client success story you've been involved with? Uh, I mean, so it's still ongoing. This is a long, long-term uh, wealth management project. I think the first time that we noticed that we were really onto something, it was with our first product, ScholarAise, which is a shareable college savings fund. Basically, what we were discovering is that young parents were looking at their, their budgets and like, we don't really have anything left at the end of the month to invest in a college savings fund because we got to take care of our student loans. We got to save for a down payment. We got to hit our employer's match. These are all more pressing financial needs. So obviously you need to take care of those first. Uh, so they miss out on investing in these college savings funds. So our plan was, why don't we make it easy for you to set up this account, but instead of you funding it, get your friends and family to contribute. Uh, and so what we discovered with this is we have 10 times as much money in these accounts than people without the gifting optionality. So we have accounts that never would have existed with growth that is occurring from funds that never would be there. So that the next generation will leave college better than we did without that. Uh, and so that was kind of the premise of that product. One of our early, one of our early customers, I'll never forget this. You know, he calls me, he's like, Hey, uh, is it okay? Uh, my son asked me what I wanted for father's day. And I'm like, you know, I really like you to contribute to your college savings fund. And, you know, he's like, is that okay if he does? And I was like, absolutely. Uh, but like, I'm looking at this and now I followed up with this and, and, and stayed in touch with, you know, with his family. And like through the years, like this, this child, I think he was seven years old, when he did this, the seven year old put, you know, his allowance into his college savings fund. This was an introduction to that child that his parents were thinking about him going to college. They were planning for him to go to college, which plants in his mind, hey, this is something that I should be thinking about, something that I should be taking seriously. We're already putting this plan in place. What's more is now that he's putting money into it, he's asking questions. How's it doing? Is it performing well? What's it invested in? So this was an opportunity for this family, this dad, to share with his son that he was planning on sending him to college, he was investing for it, and then also introducing him to what investing is and how putting money away now can yield more money later, can yield more optionality later. And like this was just one of those moments where I was like, if we can, if we can do this, you know, more and more and more, wow, what a powerful thing to really help introduce children to this, to show them that there, there's a way to plan for things that, that people are interested in their future and you know, they should be interested in as well. So in the world of business, who have you admired the most? Who would you like to meet? What, what's been the best success story that you would like to find that person and talk to them that would be mutually beneficial? That's an interesting question. So who is out there doing big things that I would like to connect with? Yeah. Uh, huh. I mean, there's obviously, you know, people that I've always admired, like people that, that branch out and think about new, new ways of thinking about old and storied products like uh, Chesky at Airbnb. I think that's a really interesting model. Like, I think he's really cool. I think he's also a very, um, a very principled and, and, and morally driven founder, which I think is a really interesting thing for him to be able to keep that and control that as he grows and his company becomes bigger the stakes. I would love to meet him. I would love to spend time with him, ask him questions about how, you know, you, you help craft this vision, how you help get buy-in for this vision, uh, and then how you, you maintain that sense of, of purpose and that sense of morality as a company begins to grow and scale. So if you would run into the 20 year old version of yourself in a dream tonight, you could give that younger version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom you've gained in your life. What would you tell that younger version of you? I would tell that younger version of me, Hey man, it's going to be all right. <laughs> it's going to be all yeah. right. Just, uh, just, just take a breath, take a beat. It's going to be okay. You know, keep, keep working, maybe take, you know, I just, just take it easy. <laughs> I think there the you younger. Go. The younger version of me was in, in a constant state of turmoil. I think it would have been nice to kind of just take a little beat. And, you know. Yeah. 
So what are you the proudest of that you've done as far as business is concerned? What, what accomplishment, what have you done? What are you the proudest of? The things that really, really, really get me going is being able to take something that's out there and then open it up to new audiences, to new people. Uh, that's, that's what motivates us here at Raise Financial. That is the ethos of everything that we're doing is we are understanding systems, large scale systems, finding tools that, you know, help people take advantage of it and then making it to where they can use it. Uh, so that's the thing that I'm most proud of is taking, you know, taking ideas and products that kind of exist and then changing them to have more people use them. Um, you know, getting back to that, that college savings example. I mean, we have people now with money in accounts growing and compounding and returning things that never would have had money in those accounts that never would have been growing. Uh, and that's amazing. What, what, that's the greatest thing in the world to think about that, that there are, you know, kids out there today that are going to leave college with less debt because of what their parents did using our product. Uh, yeah. That's incredible. There, there is going to be an entire generation of Americans that are going to be better suited for retirement because of using our products. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. So you as know, somebody it, that's, that's an explorer, that's interested in, in a lot of different things, if you could go back in time and witness an event firsthand in the history of our human march, what would you love to have seen firsthand? I mean, I think <laughs> I think I would have loved to I, I would love to go forward in time. I think that would be an interesting thing to yeah. see that. Uh, but in this sense, I mean, I don't know, like, I'm always interested in kind of these moments. And you wonder, like at the time, these pivotal moments, are they are they recognized as being pivotal? I think frequently they aren't. You don't realize that you're you're there at this moment where things kind of pivot. Um, I mean, there's obviously so many things in history. I think one of the more recent and then I think kind of like present because you know we're all here in America one of the interesting moments in exploration uh I think was was you know the final journey of, of Henry Hudson when he was marooned in his ship and I think it was past Hudson Bay um but he was marooned by a mutiny on his ship but basically it was that final journey of him trying to find a path through you know America to the the Indies that was kind of that that failure was the thing that signaled to the rest of the world that uh you're not getting through america <laughs> so so either you know it, it's no longer a way to get to, to the indies so either look at this as a place where you want to set up shop and you want to, to spend time and build communities and colonize uh or leave it alone and so i think that was kind of this really interesting moment where the world kind of pivoted around henry hudson it, it was this failure that showed the world that, you know, that this is something else. It's not a path. It's not a rest stop on the way to something else. This is the destination. Um, I think that's kind of interesting. And you think about that, you know, Henry Hudson, you know, freezing to death and then the Hudson Bay with the sun ruined and this rowboat thinking that he had failed and, and he had failed, but it was that failure in the sense that really kind of ushered in the future um, that ushered in this change of direction to how we focus on, 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 what our focus then was of the new world. Yeah. Um, I think it's an interesting moment in history, but it probably was incredibly anticlimactic and very depressing. But right. uh, I'm, I'm interested in moments like that, like when the world changes and shifts, you know, like when the Industrial Revolution began, that changed everything. The Agricultural Revolution, probably the AI Revolution will change everything. Yeah. Um, but you just, I, I think those are really, they're just really interesting things. And like, you wonder what it's like to, be in it. I mean, like the agricultural revolution as well. Like that was when we started doing that, that was a shittier way of living. Like birth rates went down, life expectancies went down. It was not as good as the hunter gatherer lifestyle, but somehow we still stuck with it. And then, you know, as we stuck with it and we got better about it, you know, then obviously our, our life expectancies began to increase, um, you know, our sedentary, you know, our, our, our sedentary locality let us set up things like cities and city states and so on and so forth. Um, but it was just interesting because like at the moment, it didn't really seem like a good idea, but we still stayed with it. Yeah. And then long term, it, it wound up, you know, yielding the fruit, pun intended. But it's, I, I'm always fascinated by those moments in history. For sure. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you're running the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? 
Uh, I think of myself as a problem solver. I think of myself as a servant. I've always discovered that I was happiest when I was solving problems and I was happiest when I was helping people. Uh, these are the things that, that they've always been there ever since I was a kid. I don't think I necessarily was keyed into them when I was younger, but, you know, it was always there. I have memories of, you know, I don't think I connected it at the time, but I had memories of like helping people or being a, a, of service or solving a problem. And like, that's just always when I was the happiest. And it's like, that's kind of what I gravitate towards today is, is helping people, whether that's our customers do what they want to do, solving problems, whether that's, you know, with, with, you know, my home life, with my work life and, you know, helping people, whether that's people that I work with, giving them the tools that they need to succeed in their careers, giving the tools they need to succeed at work, um, friends, my family, um, people in my network. I just, I like being involved. I like helping. Right on. For sure. So speaking of solving problems, if anyone out there listening wants to hire you, learn more about you, your company and what you do, where do they go? Sure. Uh, you can find us at raisefinancial.com. Um, you can also find us on Instagram. I think it's at raisefinancial. Uh, we have a lot of great content there. Um, there's contact buttons on our website too. If you want to reach out to me, I will get those, those messages as well. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any questions, journey or, you know, things they want to share. We're, we're always here to talk. Right on. Wesley, thank you, man. This has been great. I appreciate your time today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Best of luck, man. Cheers. Take care. Cheers.